it's Linda from Lanyos Handmade and today we're going to make the Wormwood Wallet from the designer at Cork and Copper Designs. This is a handy little wallet. It's probably the smallest you'll ever find and yet it holds a ton of things. Now the Wormwood Wallet, I think she counted it up and it must have about, I don't know, 18, that kind of rings a bell. Um, options, <laughs> different ways you can make it. Obviously you can make it with a snap or without a snap, right? And you can also make it lined like this one or unlined. And you can also make it closed so it's only for cards. I never tried if you could fit a bill in here yet, but you might be able to. And uh, the other one is opened on one side. Then you can also make it double-sided, so it's got pockets on both sides and it's closed, or pockets on both sides and it's opened. So she gives you a lot of options here. You could make this pattern, I don't know, I feel like it's a hundred different ways. So this wallet uses up scraps and uh, it's really handy, small pieces. Great scrap buster. I used cork, I used vinyl. Um, I did use a vinyl that was a little bit squishy, so it kind of stretched when I was sewing. So it, it turned out, but it's just a caution to you that some vinyls are too thick, some are too thin, some are too stretchy. But, you know, test it on your machine and see whether you can get rid of those scraps that you've been holding on to for so long. This one was made with cork and uh, it I found it to be the easiest material to sew with. And this one was cork too. Now these two were vinyl and this vinyl did a little bit better than this one, like I say, because this one was a little bit stretchy. So basically snaps or no snaps, double-sided or not double-sided. This one's closed or open. It's all your choice. I will put links down below, you know, the little timestamps, uh, because I made all four of these in a row and I'll put a timestamp for which one is at which time. So if you want to bounce ahead, you can bounce ahead to the one you want to make. I cut some of these on my machine, my Cricut, and uh, I think that was the first two I cut on my Cricut. And the second two I cut by hand and I had no problem cutting them by hand. The only thing I did is I made rounded corners here by hand. So it was really a rectangle to start with and I rounded the corner off just slightly to have nice round corners on them. You could even make it with the square corners if you wanted. You know, cutting by hand, maybe you don't wanna manually round the corners off. So if you leave them square, that's another style too. Now you really have to pay attention to the construction when you're doing it because if you sew something at the wrong time, you might end up sealing up your card slots. So she has really good instructions on each style on when to sew what piece down. Because like I say, this one's open on this side, but this one is not. So I'd pay attention to her construction so you could uh, get it together properly to your liking. So let's get started with our sewing. Um, you, As you can see, I've got a mixture of uh, solid and prints here. I've kind of mapped out what I want where. Um, now we're going to just top stitch the edges of these pieces. And don't forget to top stitch the edges of this one too. I've left the threads long because I'm going to pull them through to the other side and stick a spot of glue on them. Um, you can use edge paint or even uh, fabric glue sometimes gets rid of all those little fuzzy bits. Um, so I'll top stitch this and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, I've top stitched everything where she told me to and I put a little bit of glue on the thread ends. Um, you can back stitch, but uh, I kind of prefer this way because I don't want too many holes. Um, now I can put a snap in the bottom. Uh, Took me a while to figure out from the mess I had which snap goes where, but we do want this ugly looking side on the inside. I should tie those threads or pull them down or something. 
Oh yeah, and don't forget you've got to take the opportunity to put your label on if you want one there. And I'll put this on here and hammer it down. And uh, I'm not gonna do it here because it's too much noise. So just hold on, I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I've got the snap on this one. Um, if you're using the SVG files, uh, the snap holes are included. Make sure you pick the right file. It's easy to have, add the hole afterwards if you need it, but it's not, it's impossible to take the hole out if it's there mistakenly. So this piece is done. So the next thing we do is take this and we shall sew it on here the way she instructs. And it's going to just be sewn across the bottom here. So this is sewn on now. There is a design and a method to putting things together like this so that you don't uh, sew over twice in the same spot. So pay attention to um, the instructions and how you're supposed to sew it together, the order you're supposed to use. So now the next thing I do is line this up here. And I'm going to get some clips to do it. Or you can use double-sided tape and just sew down the edge here and don't go into the curve and that'll hold this on and like I said it all looks kind of goofy but there's a method to having it this way uh, follow the instructions now we've got this it's sewn on as strangely as it is it's all going to work and um, now we can put this aside we don't need these pieces yet and we are going to put the snap in this one. This snap is going to match up with this one down here and cover everything up. So I'm just gonna pound this and then we'll come back and see what kind of sewing we can do. There, now I have pounded my snap in and uh, this one's ready to go. Next, we put the back on it. And when we're sewing the back on, of course, we line it up nicely again. And we have to make sure that we only sew the side that she talks about. So we're only going to sew this side. There you go, a bit more sewing. So now let's line this up here because we're gonna add more layers to it. So we're gonna be very careful, follow the instructions and make sure that everything is snug and fitting here. I mean, if you have some errors with cutting or with your um, cutting machine, you can always um, shave them off afterwards, but we're just gonna start with this for now. So let's put all these layers together. So we've got it all clipped together and now we can sew it. And we're only going to sew from here around to here and leave this edge open. I've only um, clipped it so I didn't have too many things flying around. So I'm going to sew up to this point and from this point and then we'll be finished. And there we go, there's our first one done. You might want to take the time to check if you've got any knots showing um, because they'll get rubbed. I'm going to put glue on my beginning and my end here. And uh, we've got a little slip pocket and card slots. And then there's another slip pocket here. And then after we can close it up. And this is pretty quick to make, pretty good for markets and pretty handy in your uh, back pocket even. <laughs> okay, now let's go on to the next one. Uh, the next one has this close, so there's a bit of a different kind of uh, sewing sequence to it. But uh, we'll follow along the instructions and we'll get it. And what else was I going to say? Oh, you can always make these without the snaps on them too, just so that they flap over and hold things. It's up to you. So with the snap, without a snap, open on the side or closed on the side. But as it is, one, two, three, four five. You've got five places to slip money or receipts or cards, things like that. 
so it's pretty handy. I really like this. I haven't seen this very much where you can actually slide something out because your thumb touches it. So I'm going to do up the next one now and uh, hang around. We'll see how to do the one with the closed side. Next, this one is going to be the same but different because it's going to be lined. So I have two pieces here and it's going to be closed. You remember the other one had the open side on it? This side's going to be closed. So the sewing procedure for it is different. But right now I'm going to top stitch one, two, three, four, five things. Remember this one kind of that's the raw edge of all of it. So I'm going to top stitch those five things. Oh, then I can put my label on here like I did last time and I can put a snap in. You do not have to put a snap in if you don't want to. Uh, you'll see I didn't punch. Oh, I still have tape on there from the Cricut. Um, I uh, didn't punch holes in this one this time just to be different. But now that I think about it, I'm going to put those snap holes in. I've got one here to mark, but I didn't get the other one. So I'll put the hole in there too. Because half the snaps go in the top here and half go in here. So let's get our top stitching done first. And then I'll come back and show you and I'm while I'm at it I might as well put my hole in my snap and my label so that's three things I'm going to do <laughs> I'll be back okay let's do this we've got one two three four five pieces just with the top stitching and remember this one has to go slanted like that and that is the piece that we're going to put our label on where's my label gone I've lost it I'll sew a label on here and I'm going to measure out according to the pattern where the hole goes because this one I didn't print with the hole print. I didn't cut on my Cricut the hole into it so I'll have to put the hole in manually and then after I can pound the snap on top of it and uh, I'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay, I've got my label on now, and I've got all my top stitching, and now I'm going to put this snap on. Why are all these pieces so small? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try and get this snap on here and push it down. Give it a hammer. But you know darn well I'm going to go turn the camera off because this is just such a noise. You don't want to hear it. So let's put this piece aside and we'll work on our front piece. And we put this on here and clip it really well. And I'm going to sew just across the bottom. But first I'm going to check the measurements in the pattern to see how far up I go. So that's all we're going to be sewing right now is this piece along the bottom. Right across. I'm going to go check the measurements. There, now I've sewn that on. And I can put this piece on top of it. We're not going to sew it right away. We're just going to make sure it's lined up. So I'm going to put some clips in it. You can use uh, double-sided tape. You just have to watch out, you know. The stuff I have right now is so sticky, I can't even, I can't even touch it or I stick to it. So uh, it depends on your machine and it depends on what kind of double-sided tape you have. You could also use a bit of glue if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave the clips in it for now. And I think I'm gonna put them right on the edge so that's where the stitching line would be. So if it, the clips leave any marks, then they'll leave them where the stitching line is anyway. There, so that won't matter because the clip marks will be in the stitching line. So this piece is ready. So now we can stick our, we've got one hole, I need another hole. And I still have tape from when I taped it down onto my Cricut mat. So now we put our two pieces together and make sure our hole goes all the way through. One of this is gonna be lining and one of it's gonna be the outside layer. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to find my little awl and see if I can poke a hole in there so I can put this through. 
Okay, I've got my snap in. That'll be the outside, that'll be the inside. And I do have some double-sided tape because this piece is so big, I don't want it um, slipping. I could put a hundred clips in here, it might not hold. But look at this double-sided tape, it makes these little glue balls everywhere. It's just, it's irritating. Anyway, I'm going to line these up and make sure that they're sitting together and that'll help when I'm sewing. We can always trim the edges if something hangs out too much, right? But uh, this will be good for now. So I'm going to put this aside and let's go figure out how we put the rest of the pieces together. Now, of course, you can't use glue or uh, double-sided tape unless you know it's going to work that you can sew through it. Um, I don't have any glue or anything like that where my top sticking, stitching is going to be. So now I can put all my pieces together. This is the back and it goes on, this back pocket goes on the back here. So that's the back already to be sewn. Be very careful when you're going around that you're catching all layers and that your edges are lining up. And then on the inside, the front, inside here, we're going to have all these layers attached. And our last layer. So I'm going to sew all the way around this and I'll come back and show you. Okay, I've sewed around and uh, this is quite thick. You can see it here, but my machine managed. This is only two layers, so it's okay. And uh, I didn't mess up too bad. It looks, looks okay. You might want to stick a dot of glue on your beginning and end just in case. And uh, we can close it up like this. And just to show you the difference between the one I made before and the one now here. And then this one, this is a closed one if you wanna make that one. And this is the open one if you wanna make that one. So there you go. Now we can move on to the next project. Okay, let's get started. Um, just a note, when you're hand cutting, you're going to hand cut this curve in, right? And these curves and hand cut the center and I drafted out where the hole was supposed to go from the pattern piece and I traced it out but I didn't quite like it so then I measured it to double check it so you can write on the wrong side of your material to figure out where you want this opening to go so now I'm going to top stitch along here here's my other two pieces top stitch on the top end here and this top end, and on this one. So I'm just gonna top stitch through all these. That's two, four, six, seven pieces that need top stitching. And after that, I'll come back and we'll continue. And while we're at it, we might as well top stitch along here, here, and here, too, of these pieces. And you'll notice that these are mirrored. So if you want to have your pockets on both sides of your wallet, you have to make them opposite, mirrored. And cutting by hand, you have to do it, or cutting with machine, you have to do it too. Okay, all my top stitching is done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are my two extras for my, oops, this way, for my wallet. And uh, one of the, all I did was go in one stitch and then back out one stitch. So. I just reversed one stitch or two to knot the ends. Uh, one of them I was daydreaming and I messed up, so I just stuck a spot of glue on the back to hold the threads and make sure it's dry before you move on to the next step. Now, when it comes to these pieces, they need snaps on them so that they can snap together. And uh, I put the little dot here where I want the snap to go and it is in the measurements in the pattern, but it is also on the pattern piece if you want to trace it through from that. So right now I'm just going to go put these snaps on. Now you might have different snaps like me, um, but whatever works, works. Mine are meant to be exposed on this side. So uh, this side is hidden in here, ugly, but this one could be a nice 
snap on an outside of the bag too but I don't have enough of these small little things to make it work. So whatever works for you is perfectly fine, just as long as you get two different kinds going together so that when you close them up later, this is how they go. Okay, so let's see what we do next. Now, next step, we measure up from the bottom like the pattern says, and we just sew across here only, just across the bottom. Now, next, let's sew... This is our next layer. We've got our first layer sewn on and it was all flappy, right? It's not quite there. It's only just the bottom that's sewn on. And then we'll do the next one. And the next one, let's clip it all together here again. The next one, we have to be careful which side we sew. We're going to sew this side and there's a measurement here that you can use from the pattern to sew up here. And that's because it's gonna sit like this. And then this one, you do the opposite side from the measurement up to the top because it's going to sit like this. So then this ends up being open so you can slide things in. So I'm just going to sew this side and this side. So here we have it. We've sewed this on. So you've got this one attached this way and this one attached this way. And it's important to follow the instructions putting these together because they end up, uh, you know, it's a, a really good construction method. You end up with the least amount of top stitching and just what you require to keep everything together the way it's supposed to be. So now that we've got this one done, see these will go like this so they'll be open. We'll put these aside and we'll do this one now. Now this one we're going to sew, I didn't round my corners up here yet. We're going to sew from the mark to the mark that's on the pattern. And we're going to sew from the mark to the top that's on the pattern. So this will only be attached on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go sew it right now and I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I've sewn this now. You'll see I just did the one side, the left side, like we were supposed to. And now we can put it all together. Just gonna clip this here a bit. Oh, look, I need a label on here. Now this is gonna be the open side that has all the sewing on it. And I wonder which side I should put my label on. put my label here. So I'm going to put my label on first, sew it on, and then I'll come back and we will put all this together the way it's supposed to go. Okay, I've got my label put on. All my pieces are all lined up, ready to go. So now we can put this together. We just have to make sure to keep the sewn parts together and the not sewn parts together. So I'm going to put this right here. And this one right here. And then this goes on top too. See, this is gonna be the opening. And it's going to close like that. Now I'm going to double check it, make sure it's all lined up edge to edge. And we're going to sew across the bottom here. We're going to start where we stopped here and go around up to here. And start where we stopped here and go around up to here. And then we'll end up with openings. And this is the open side style. So you've got cards and you can fill bills in here actually, you know, your money. So I'm going to go sew that and carefully check that it's all lined up. Okay, I have my wallet finished and I 
double check to make sure it was all lined up. And I sewed, not the opening, because this is where you can slip a dollar bill or something and uh, keep it safe. I sewed from this corner around to here and from this corner around to here so that it was sealed up that way. So this is finished now. Uh, you can trim off the edges if you see any threads, glue any corners. And uh, I think we're gonna go on to the next one. We'll do one where this is closed. So now let's make another one. This one is going to be lined, so that's why I have two of these. And it's also going to be closed. So it's going to have a lot of opportunities for card slots. Now, the one thing you might notice, I don't have my little window cut in this one, but it's going to be easy to trace it on the white and then cut it out. So I have to do that. And also I don't have the dips, <laughs> the little dips in these pieces. So before I start, I'm gonna make sure that I've got the dips in these pieces. And then I will come back and we will top stitch, not that or that, but we will top stitch all these dips and the slanted parts here. So I've done all the top stitching. Oops, and I just lost my snap somewhere. Uh, I've done the top stitching. There's a snap that goes on one side of this and a snap that goes on the other side of it, which I have just lost. Oh, there it is. So I'll put these snaps on here. Um, you know, I try and sort out what color you like, how you like the colors to go. If I do it like this, nobody will even notice that it's uh, two pockets here. So I'm going to stagger my colors here. And that's the back one. So all the top stitching is done and time for snaps. Now I have my snaps on and we're going to stick with the first two here. I'm going to put the first one down. Well, it's the second pocket on the back and she measures out how far it should go up from the bottom and I'll sew along the bottom here. And that will make it so that when you put your card in, it doesn't fall through. So I'm going to sew these two seams at the bottom here right now and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Now we've got our pocket on. See it's only attached here. And this one's going to go on top. You'll notice this one stretches the purple, so it's not the best to use for this pattern. Um, I'm happy that the other pieces here don't stretch. So I might have to trim off my edges when they poke out here because this piece has gone kind of stretchy on me. So we're going to line this up carefully. so that we can sew it together later. Now the next pieces that we put together, oh, I haven't rounded my corners here. Well, I'll go round my corners, but I just wanna let you know that after I round my corners, I'm going to put the wrong sides together here and just clip them so they're ready. I hope this blue one isn't uh, stretchy like the purple, but I think it will be, so that'll be interesting. But maybe it's a good thing if it is stretchy because it's going to be on the outside. This is going to be the inside. So it'll stretch nicely over top of that stiff final underneath. And on the back of it is going to be this put on. So you've got some contrast there. So, First, round my corners and then clip it back together again with this. So I could definitely see when I was putting this on here that uh, the blue is uh, a bit stretchy and it's helpful when bending it, but uh, we'll see when I'm sewing it together how successful I am. So. I have uh, directional material here, and that's why I put it on the inside because I figured people would open it like this. So that means 
I'm going to put this one on the bottom. There's another corner that's not rounded out. Okay, and you don't have to round these corners because this one's sewn in and this one's sewn in. So we're going to start with this. And on the back of this, make sure our words are facing the right way with both of them, we're going to put this. So I've got a ton of clips in here, but I'm going to remove some of them just to line this up here. And before I sew again, I'm going to check again to make sure that it's all lined up. And I'm not going to line it up with the blue because the blue kind of stretches over, sticks out. The blue is going to get trimmed off. So that's the pocket on the back. And then inside we have one set of these. And again, too, we'll see if my machine can sew through all these layers. It's always a fun trick. The good thing about this is all these layers are squishy, so either I'm really going to get jammed up or I'm going to have some success. We shall see. I did this with cork and I had um, one less layer and it was fine. Then we'll put this on the bottom. And you'll notice it doesn't go all the way to this edge, but it does go here. So it's just sitting by itself. And then on the other side, we're gonna put this one. And that's how it's going to look without the clips, of course. Now, before I sew, I'm going to check again that everything's lining up nicely, and I'm going to sew all the way around, and that's going to attach everything. So I'm going to double check this, make sure it's lined up, and then I'm going to sew around. And then later, when I'm done, I'll check and see. I see the purple sticking out a little bit, so we can just trim off anything that's sticking out. And there you go, I am done. I sewed all the way around, attaching this layer and this layer and the lining and the outer layer and the pocket. So this is all set to go now. And I did trim around the vinyl because some of the purple and blue stuck out more, it stretches. So you, you kind of have to pay attention to what kind of materials you use. Um, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. I have one, two, three, four, five, six card slots here and two slip pockets. And this is the closed side sided version of uh, this lovely little wallet. So how'd that go? Which one did you make? Did you make yours double sided and open and unlined? Or did you make yours double-sided and closed and lined? Or did you make it unlined and single-sided and opened? Or did you make it lined and single-sided and closed? Those are only four of the many options that uh, the designer has given us. Now, whatever you made, be sure to share it with us. Cork and Copper Designs does have a Facebook group and I'll put the link down below. And I'll also put the link down below for the pattern. And I'll put the timestamps down below too if you want to just jump ahead to where you want to learn how to do a certain one. If you have any questions, make sure you ask either here or in the Cork and Copper Designs Facebook group. And I hope you had fun. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.